I don't know if this is the right place for this, but I need to put these stories out there just so people have a record of what's going on here, in case something ever does happen to me. I work as a sleep analyst at a special clinic located in a place I don't feel comfortable enough to disclose. Um, my job is essentially to watch people whilst they're sleeping and determine the cause of their insomnia, the sleep apnea, usually run-of-the-mill problems. Doctors refer their patients to us before they hand them medication so they can have a more thorough idea of their issues. By and large, my job's okay. Pays well. While to most places in the country, sleep analysts aren't required to watch live footage of their patients, our clinic requires sleep analysts to do this as part of the policy, and patients always have to stay overnight for the analysis to be completed correctly. This would be alright if things didn't get specifically strange around here at night. When I first started working here, I got assigned a lot of the midnight shifts. I'm pretty nocturnal, so I didn't mind this at all. Mostly I used to sit in the observation room and watch the screen. And when it seemed like the person was in deep sleep, I just listened to their breathing patterns for changes whilst reading a book. When I'd get up to go to the toilet though, an uneasy feeling would settle in my gut. It always felt as though someone was watching me in that long corridor between the observation room and the bathroom. I kept writing it off as nerves until I started seeing something in the corner of my eye. It would just disappear the moment I look at it. It's like the shadow of a person, but there was no... shadow. I mentioned it to one of my co-workers when I was handing over the next shift to him, and he just got really uneasy and said not to acknowledge it. When I pushed him further, he dropped his voice to a whisper and said, it gets really angry when you talk about it. He refused to say any more. A week later, he quit. I never saw him again. No one really talks to him anymore. It's almost like he never existed. I think his name was Daniel. But I can't be so sure. Every few months, and for no reason, all the patients sit up in bed at once. Their eyes are wide open, and they're staring at something in the right corner of the room, mouthing words, but not actually making a sound. It looks like they're talking to someone, but they can't be because nothing's in there with them. The first time I saw this, I panicked and called my boss, and was really surprised to hear her say, groggily, as she only worked the day shift, just erase that part of the video when it's over. I tried to protest, but just do it. And don't wake them up or, or mention it to them in the morning. My colleagues say that they're sleep-talking, but I've never seen sleep-talking like that, as a collective in different secluded rooms with eyes wide open, looking like they're bulging in fear. I tried reporting it to my boss's boss, but got no response. My boss must have heard about it, though, because she gave me a verbal warning for disobeying her and going behind her back. One time at around 3 in the morning on Wednesday, we started hearing hammering and scratching on the clinic's door. A weird wailing shriek joined it. Every time one of the three of us would answer, that is me, the security guard, or the sleep tech, there'd be no one there. Sure, it could be some kids playing a prank, but the clinic was located close to a secluded forest. The nearest town is miles and miles away. They'd have to get to us by car. Limited parking areas around here. We didn't see a car in any of them, and we went out with flashlights to look twice. We all thought it was maybe the wind, as it was particularly windy that night, so I just let it go. They carried on till early morning, and when we got ready to hand over the shift, our colleagues, Sally and James, came in looking perplexed. Instead of answering us, they just told us to go and see what happened to the front door. It looked like someone, or something, had been trying its damnedest to get in. There were these these bloody scratches all the way down the thick wood. Scratches that looked far too wide for any bear or wolf. Any kind of wild animal. Scratches that certainly didn't look human. We keep cats in the clinic to soothe people. We have five of them, and generally just let anxious patients stroke them to soothe themselves before going to sleep. These cats have been raised from an early age to cope well with strangers, so... Calm and generally very friendly in nature, 
Uh, Sammy, the cuddly little tabby, is the friendliest and favorite amongst everyone. Recently, he's been hissing more frequently, though, but only at certain patients. He refuses to go near them. Strangely, those people are always the ones who complain of night terrors. The kind where they accidentally scratch or bruise themselves. I'm sure, it's just a coincidence, but it's weird. You know? How he always seems to know. The last one, for now, is about what I found in one of the rooms no staff other than the bosses are allowed to access. You see, the clinic isn't a new building. It used to be a hospital once upon a time, before it fell into disuse and disrepair after the owners died. The kin didn't take any real interest in running it, and people started going to the newer, swankier hospitals that were built in their own towns. It's at least a couple hundred years old, and even though it's been renovated and looks brand new, there are certain parts of the building we aren't allowed to go into because they're just, um, still being done up. They're labeled private and have authorized access only across the front. A few days ago, I lost my way trying to find the new staff room they had just renovated for us and found myself in an older, carpeted corridor, staring at stairs that led up to a red door, which was just ajar, light pouring out from inside. Thinking this was a staff room, I took the stairs, two at a time, wanting to get out of the dark. When I pushed open the door, I found a single armchair in the center of the room, wooden floors and a massive floor-to-ceiling window behind it. The light came from a crystal chandelier. The whole room looked like time had forgotten it. It was so different to the clinic, which was all white and medical and still smelled of fresh paint. It was also slightly creepy how there was no other furniture in here, just a single red and gold ornate armchair. A pile of black files lay on top. The first one open. My curiosity got the better of me. I picked up the open file and I began to read. It paled almost immediately. Across the front of the file, it stated clearly deceased. As of today but I had never heard of this patient before. His name was Charles Islington. He was part of an experiment on night twitches, the thing that happens when you and your whole body jerks and no one really knows why. I hadn't even known we were conducting something like this, and all the staff were supposed to have equal knowledge of everything that happens within the clinic. I got as far as reading, patient appears to be convulsing after second induced jerk when I heard a soft scraping sound behind me. My heart stopped. I dropped the file, slowly turning around, and there was... There was nothing there. Suddenly, the chandelier began to flicker, and I swear to God, I saw something, something, move in between the flickering. Edging closer to me, it looked like a, like a figure, but I couldn't make out its face. All I know is that it was reaching for me. It wasn't a human hand. It couldn't be. It was too twisted and gnarled and pale, and the fingernails were just... They weren't right, but I couldn't, I couldn't even tell if it was what I was seeing in my eyes was so affected by the light. Instead, I ran, almost blinded by the flickering in the direction of the door. I kept running down the stairs until I reached the corridor to the observation room and then walked to the observation room and shut the door, locking it for good measure. The rest of the night passed uneventfully, but I took the next night off because I was still slightly shaken. I live alone in an apartment in a busy neighborhood in town about 30 miles away from the clinic, and usually I feel really safe here. My little studio has always been my refuge, and coming home has been a welcome respite. Ever since that night, though, I feel like, like something's watching me, like, like something's angry. It's followed me back from the clinic. And see it shifting, moving slowly, carefully, like it's waiting to devour me. I, I think I haven't seen it yet. I think that's what's keeping me safe. But I know it's there. It's watching me right now as I type this, waiting in the corner. In my eye. Hey there, kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just wanted to give a big thank you 
to you for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's podcast episode for uh, clicking on this Mr. Creepypasta story time. Before I wish you sweet dreams tonight, I just wanted to give a big thank you to Taisea Lynn, Gino Baga, Arneo, Eric Mary, Daniel Polson, Trey Smiles, Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Wayne Milestead, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Nicholas Saeed Alyasin, Buddy Burroughs, Tyler Ramberg, Goonington, G Weevil 3, Diana Kraus, Asia, Gabrielle DeBaca, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, Melissa Swagart, Chumpinski, Daniel Rao, The Ginger Bros, Robert Ramirez, Andrew Stenberg, Holy Realm, Ralph Rodriguez, and Dr. Strawberry. These guys are the friggin' amazing people from Patreon who help me stay alive. If you guys would like to help support the show as well, you can always check me out at patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta and get your name either shown here at the end of the credits or in the description down below. And you can check out this podcast here on YouTube or here on Spotify or Apple iTunes podcast or Google Play podcast, whichever one you happen to go to. I mean, seriously, if you're on YouTube right now and you look down in the description, there's like a whole list of different playlists that you can be able to watch, like hours upon hours upon hours of content. If you want to get your horror story creepypasta fix, it's, it's all there as well as like a live stream. Oh, and also my wife sells Dungeons and Dragons themed tea. Etsy.com slash Ivory Monocle Tea. <laughs> Links are also down below. <laughs> Sweet dreams, everybody.